There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone Dead beneath the water I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world And I you. I'm Garrett. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace. I trust you are doing well uh, despite what circumstances might be going on around you because I've been talking with a lot of people over the past, I'll say week, and there has been a lot of trials that I know are present in individuals' lives right now. Uh, I've been experiencing it on this end as well, but I want to share a message with you this morning as I know that this, someone needs to hear this this morning. There is joy in this present time right now for you. Although you might be in a struggle, I can guarantee you there is joy and there is peace and there is an answer 
waiting for you right here. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Or blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. To persevere is to maintain purpose in spite of difficulty. Guarantee you that the Lord that you serve, the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to come through in your circumstance. Whatever your situation might be, whatever perhaps has, um, has occurred that might have, have has thrown you, um, maybe caught you by surprise, rest assured it did not catch God by surprise. Psalm 34, I believe it's 19, it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. God knows exactly what you're going through and he has the answer for you. I want you just to understand that it is with him, it is with God that you will have your solution come to pass. Sometimes the solution comes in different ways. Sometimes we got to be really, really patient for it. But what I want to do is in the waiting, I want us to speak the same things that Christ Jesus spoke. Jesus said in John, let me get to it here, in John 14, let's open this Bible up, John 14, let me give you guys some time to get there, John 15, he says, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Verse, as, as verse 1, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it might bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit, which is us, we cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. If anyone does not abide in me, is thrown away like a branch and withers and branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you shall wish and it will be done. By this, my father is glorified so that you would bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Do you know that God is glorified when we produce fruit from abiding in Christ? Jesus says, let my words abide in you let those words be a part of us. Let us actually speak those words. When Jesus was in trial, he was proclaiming and confessing things such as, Father, with you all things are possible. Father, I know that you will never leave me or forsake me. I want you to prophesy those things. I want you to declare those things because those are the words of Christ. Let those words abide in you. And as you continuously prove steadfast, immovable in your situation, God is going to bring about fruit from you abiding in His presence. See, Galatians talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are all things that come from abiding in the presence of God. I don't want us to get the cart before the horse. Sometimes we seek the fruit but the fruit is a byproduct of our relationship with the Father and abiding in Christ. Seeking God's presence ought to be the number one thing that we are after. Not joy, not peace, not patience, not goodness, not faithfulness, not gentleness, not even self-control. But we ought to be after His presence. All those other things are byproducts. And the reason why I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit is because when we abide in our situations that might be those trials, which I believe some of us are in right now, we get to display peace, we get to display joy, and we get to experience God in a different level. 
we get to experience him come through for us. See, it's hard to have a testimony without the test. I believe a lot of us are being tested right now. And God wants to show you his goodness and his faithfulness. I want to go to a, song, a, a, a verse in the Psalms here. Psalm uh, 30, 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. And he, oh, excuse me, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. Commit your way to the Lord. Establish in your heart right now that you are following Jesus Christ. The words of Christ are going to abide in you and his words are going to be what you latch onto, what you set your anchor on, and what you decide to speak, your prophetic decree, what you use as weapons as you battle the, 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 the spiritual realm, the weapons of this warfare. You have a very strong weapon indeed, and that is the word of God that has been spoken over your life. That you as a child of God, us as ones who have confessed that Jesus Christ is our Lord, he is the one who fights for us. We have a beautiful relationship with God. And what he wants for us is to bear much fruit. Psalm 23, 5 says that he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. You're surrounded by a lot of noise, by a big trouble, by frustration, by anxiety, by things that you might need answers to, things that you just want clarification on, and you feel almost like sometimes the walls are caving in on you, and God says, this is what I do. I actually prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. In the midst of that, that's where you're going to find me. In the midst of that, that's where you get to dine and actually relax. You get to have and experience peace, like we just talked about. That's the fruit of the Spirit. So just be of good cheer. Do not get focused on the problem. That is such a lie and that is a huge temptation for us that we can get downtrodden and, 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 and just bogged down with our focal point being on something other than God himself and enjoying his presence. You see, when I was thinking about sin, sin is missing the mark. If you've ever played darts, it's really hard to hit a bullseye if you're staring at the number three. You don't look at what's wrong. You look at what's right, where you're going. Let our eyes be fixed on God. Let his words, the things he's spoken over us, be what we proclaim in this day. Let your mind be directed by your confession, by what you have committed yourself to. You know, as a child of God, that God will come through for you. You know that God will not let you fail. Maybe you don't know that. I'm going to say again. God will not let you fail. You commit your way to Him. And you trust in Him. And like we read in the psalm right there, He will act. I guarantee it. He's done it time and time again. And He wants to take this situation that you're in right now, and this season that you're in, and make this a testimony. Another notch in the belt. Another story that you can tell others. Another testimony that you can look back on in so many days from now and draw strength from because you saw him operate when you were in the fire. I just want to bless you right now. I want to speak some words over you in prayer in Christ's name to just give you an increase of encouragement, an increase of strength, an increase of steadfastness and perseverance in this moment that you're in right now. So, Father, thank you so much for just being who you are, God. God, you are a God who is ever so present. You are a God who is waiting on us. And you are a God who has fully committed himself to us. And so I thank you, Father, for inviting us to commit ourselves to you, to trust in you, so that we get to see you, the God of all creation, go to work and battle for your people. So God, we just thank you so much. I thank you knowing that nothing is too big for you, God. I thank you knowing that we've got Jesus Christ as our Lord who fights for us on a constant moment-to-moment -moment basis. And there is nothing in our lives that has taken you by surprise in this moment, in this hour. God, we love you so much and I am just so thankful, Father. I pray for that increase of wisdom and full understanding of the things that are available to each of us right now as we hear this message. Let us be reminded of the good that you have placed in us through the Holy Spirit 
as we draw our strength from you, as we know that we have the access into your presence, Father, in this day, unlike ever before, that we can come into your throne room, that we can come under your wing and in your refuge and draw peace, wait with patience, and enjoy the goodness of who you are. Father, we love you so much. And Father, I just, I ask that you bless the hearers right now, that we would be a people that stand out because of where our eyes are fixed. Father, I thank you so much that your glory is displayed through us here today. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you guys. Have an awesome week declaring truth and waiting on the Father to deliver on your behalf. He will hasten it. He will accomplish it in his timing. Be a good cheer. God bless you guys.